Hello, I'm Dr. Terry Simpson. I was asked recently to reflect on a story that I had published about a patient of mine whose name was John. John was a man who was a, born in, to a Seventh-day Adventist family and was a vegetarian all of his life. When he got a little older, he rebelled against his family. He kind of became a little bit of a radical, but he remained vegetarian. In fact, he became a full-on set vegan. I guess that was his idea of rebelling. He, and even though he was a bright guy, got a full scholarship, master's of business administration, um, and went to work, he remained a vegan. He didn't drink alcohol. He didn't smoke. Took extraordinarily good care of himself. Um, and then John came down with pancreatitis, and his first view of him wasn't good. There was a big mass in his pancreas, and ultimately the diagnosis was pancreatic cancer. I was asked to see him to do what was called a Whipple operation, where we remove the offending part of the pancreas. Sadly, the pathology came back that there was a node that was positive for pancreatic cancer, which came back later, and the margins of his, uh, one of the margins we had showed pancreatic cancer right up to it. I had to tell John this in the hospital and he kind of looked at me and said, I thought that being vegetarian was going to protect me against cancer. I thought I had read that it would turn off the genes and I've never had meat in my life. He was kind of upset and I, and he just sort of said, well, I guess that was for nothing. And he had a bad prognosis. The chance of him living even a few years was much less than that we had clean margins and no lymph nodes. In fact, Pretty much we considered him stage four pancreatic cancer. The next day, John was feeling a little bit better. He said, you know what? I should have just been eating bacon. I probably stepped over my bounds, but I, I found one of our local meat markets that put together a little bacon bouquet of flowers of some dried bacon and sent it to him. The next day I go in and he's eating the bacon. He was able to eat food at this point. The surgery had done well. I said, John, what are you doing? I said, that's bacon. That's, that's not like fake bacon. That's not sham bacon made out of beans. That's something that was made from a living pig that had a mother and had a face and all those things. And he looked at me and he smiled. I said, you know, Doc, this is pretty good stuff. I can't believe that the world has kept this from me. John did very well after surgery. He was fit. He was trim. But uh, he called me back six months later. He was still alive. Several times uh, we became good friends over the course of time. I remember the first time John went to a steak restaurant, he called me up and says, Doc, I got this reservation at XYZ Steak Restaurant. Why don't you come join me? And my response was, was, you know, John, that's not the best steak restaurant in town. And he said, what's the best one? I told him what my opinion was. Next, he called me back and said, got reservations there. Come join me. So we did. We had a lovely steak. He was feeling well. At six months, we did a uh, scans on him, no evidence of cancer, no evidence of cancer coming back. All of his tumor markers were normal. One time he came into town and he had a, uh, he was a very wealthy guy. He had a, a personal chef and a suite at one of the nicer hotels. And he called me up and he said, Doc, there, this, my chef makes the most incredible, awful, which is O-F-A-L, pork products. Come, join me. And I'm just looking at John and I, I said, why? You, you seem to be eating meats. What's going on? He says, I eat all sorts of meat. Well, year after year, I would hear from John. He would send me postcards, usually of some meat products, like I'm eating it, I'm still alive. Ten years later, John was still alive. He had beaten all of the odds. He had beaten the odds for pancreatic cancer. He shouldn't be by any rights alive. Oh, I have to tell you one more thing. John refused chemotherapy and radiation therapy against my advice and judgment. Ten years later, John was alive. And I remember sitting down with him and talking to him and said, you don't really believe that bacon cured your cancer, do you? And he says, no, I, I really don't. He says, I think I, I was just lucky. And he said, but I was pretty upset because I was pretty much led to believe that being a vegetarian would have turned off all those cancer genes and protected me against it. I said, well, it doesn't. Bottom line is, as you know, vegetables don't turn off genes. Your body can't tell if your protein came from an animal or a vegetable. You just got lucky. He said, yeah, I just got lucky. But he likes to tell everybody that his pancreatic cancer got cured by bacon. And it's a nice story, so I don't mind repeating it to you. And John gave me permission to uh, use his name, but not too much more identifying information. But those who work with him know exactly who he is. 
he retired. He has plenty of money. He's jetting around the world still, enjoying a life that most people wouldn't have because somehow he got lucky, or like John likes to say it, a pig cured by pancreatic cancer. For your doctor's orders, I'm Dr. Terry Simpson. Good day.